let's go ahead and download the Creality Cloud, which I already have mine downloaded as I've used it before. So I'm gonna click on open and you will need to sign up and sign in. Unfortunately, this app is a little bit obnoxious as it's just randomly playing some kind of talking video or something, which to be honest, I don't really appreciate. But in any case, we are in the Creality Cloud app and it looks a little busy at first until you kind of get used to how it works but if we look here on the bottom we can see here it says workbench and so these are the printers I've connected before so let's go ahead and pair this printer so we're gonna click on this little plus we're gonna find the printer we have which is the CR10 SE so it gives us directions of what to do next which is ask us to connect to Wi-Fi which we've done already earlier so all we need to do is go to the settings and click on bind Creality Cloud it's gonna give us this QR code so we're gonna click on that we've done the Wi-Fi connection and now we're gonna scan the QR code and as simple as that it's scanned and our printer pulls up so we can name it here I'm just gonna leave it the way it is click on done and now our new printer has been added here to the my devices area so if we click on it it pulls up and we can see the stat of the hot end and the hot bed and we have the print speed at hundred percent heat up so if we click on this it's gonna preheat so let's go ahead and do that it's asking us PLA or ABS so we're gonna click yes for PLA and then down here we have settings if we do this we can see we got a few more things we got other controls feeding retracting printer out detection move temperature so yeah, you can turn your fan on and off here so yeah pretty straightforward and actually quite easy to use so if we go to explore we can search for anything we want in the cloud so let's go ahead and find a calibration cube and it's gonna pop up some different type of models and I guess we'll just click on this first one here and so under the files we're gonna need to click either slice or download so we can slice it right here and if I click on that okay so this model actually cost money I didn't notice that okay it says right there 10 credits uh, let's get a free one here there we go we'll click on slice so you can click it here or down here it says slice so we're gonna choose our printer we've got a little tutorial here but yeah we can see here it's just like you would be slicing it on a desktop and you have all of your parameters so I'm just gonna leave it the way it is it is on speedy 0.2 millimeters now this is like the standard profile here so let's just click on slice so it looks like it's ready so we're gonna click print select our printer again I guess it's asking us to make sure there's no models on the build plate confirm here it says if we want to enable the print calibration which I'm not gonna do cancel and it should start printing here or sending it to the there we go it is downloading so okay for that loading up and our screen changed here actually hotbed is heated nozzle temperature is almost there also and yeah it's as simple as that guys it should start printing here in a few seconds and there we go we got this printing menu popped up so it says it's gonna take 27 minutes and some of the other information there you can pause it stop it you got settings here and your nozzle and bed temperature and our speed and it doesn't appear that we can control our speed and there it goes guys it's purging and it started the print so yeah it's quite simple to work with this printer as if you only have a phone it's quite seamless and the Creality Cloud works great and also looks like the slice was included with a raft on the bottom so that's what it's building so yeah we're gonna have to change that in the settings All right, so the cube is done and we did print with the raft. Let's see how easy this pops off. So it's stuck on there pretty well, but as you guys can see, it comes off beautifully. Let's see how easy the raft pops off. So it's stuck on there pretty well, but it did come off, which is great. Yeah, there is a little surprise here on this cube. And if we look at the x-axis here, we can see we got a lot of ghosting and some ringing too. On the Y, it's even worse which is pretty shocking to be honest and here's our X wall we can see the ringing and our Y wall also has quite a bit of ringing but yeah not too sure what's going on here but it almost feels like the input shaping or vibration compensation is not working so I probably need to run that again to make sure that is activated and calibrated and also I'm gonna go ahead and check my belts and maybe tighten them up a bit here to uh, make sure that we don't have much slop in here 
and see if that helps. I'm gonna do all that and also slice some more calibration cubes at different speeds and determine which speed is best to print out for good quality slash time it takes. All right guys, so I'm at the computer and I got the thumb drive plugged in. Let's go ahead and open it up. So we can see here we got the Benchy PLA file, filament guide and the scraper. And also we have a RAR file, which is for Windows and I'm on a Mac so that won't even open. So yeah, that's probably where our slicer is and who knows what else. But obviously you can download the slicer from the Creality website. So this is the CrealityCloud.com. So it's a web browser and you can actually, just like your phone, and I am logged in, click here on Workbench and we can see our projects here. And then if we click on Devices, we can see the printers that I've registered here. And here we have the SE. And yeah, from here you can do the same thing, you kind of what you did on the phone, is choose a file. Here's the one that we sliced, that we just printed. Or you can search for anything you want here. Let's say Benchy. And if you click on it, under the files here, you can click preview, slice, or download. So if we click on slice, we get our slicer here. It loads up the Benchy and it's actually quite intuitive to use and works very well right on the browser and you can adjust all of your stuff here and you can click on advanced and go a little more detail through all these settings and down here it says all parameters and you can really go in a lot of detail so actually wait, I just realized we we're on the K1 so yeah you're just gonna find your printer and click on it and that's the profile that will come out but so that's two ways you can slice but obviously you can also slice through the Creality Print application, which is available for Mac. And that's what I got open here. You need to have the latest version, obviously. And if we click here on where it says printer, we're gonna add a new one, CR series. Okay, so on the very bottom, there it is, the CR10SC. So we'll click add. It's gonna ask us what kind of nozzle we have, 0.4, okay. And there we go. So now we are set up and ready to go. And we got a couple profiles, which is high quality and normal. So we'll stick to normal. You choose what kind of filament we're using here. So let's go ahead and throw in a calibration cube. And obviously on the left side here, you can manipulate it, moving it around, scaling it, rotating it, stuff like that. So, but yeah, down here, you guys can see if we click on edit, this is going to be where we can set all of our settings or check them. So here we see on the quality, the layer height, 0.2 layers, the shell. I like to make my wall count to three and the bottom layers to five. I'm gonna uncheck this fill gaps everywhere. The Z seam is on sharpest corner. Under infill, we got 15%, should be fine. And by the way, there is an advanced toggle here if you wanna get even more advanced with the settings. So speed, so we got 300, a standard. I guess we will start with 50 and go all the way up to three, 400, depending on how it goes. So here you can generate supports if you click that. Put the parameters in there. Under material, we got the printing temperatures. So 220 is good for the higher speed, but since we're printing slower, I'm gonna do a just straight 200. Bill plate temperature at 60 is good. Cooling looks good. The extruder also looks like pretty good. Here we have the retraction distance, which is 0.8 seems to be just right. So if you have more stringy, you might wanna bump this up. And then under build adhesion, we got outer brim, which I'm gonna turn that just to skirt. And we're gonna do three around the print. And then we have special modes where we can choose spiralized mode. That's just gonna print a few layers on the bottom and then one layer all the way around. And we're gonna try this out also. But yeah, pretty much the rest is what it is. And so yeah, we'll just save that. I'm gonna go ahead and slice this cube. So here it tells us how long it's gonna take, 21 minutes or 22 basically here. The amount of material it's gonna use in grams and meters. Here we have a legend of what every color means and you can run through all of the layers there with these sliding bars. But down here we can see we can send it straight to the computer through Wi-Fi, export it and put it on our thumb drive or upload it to Creality Cloud and it'll be available there to print. So let's go ahead and try just sending it straight to the computer. We're gonna click on that. We're gonna confirm, that's what we wanna print. So our printer is not here, so we're gonna scan, see if we can find it. And there it comes up, so we're gonna check it. Click add, and now it's here, so we can click here on the check that we want this printer. So we can either send the G-code and then start it from the printer, or just click here and it's going to send it and start printing. And that's what I'm gonna do as we are ready to print this next print. So it is sending it now. And we can see some parameters here with what we're printing, the progress, the speed, and we can actually adjust it here, guys, if you can see that. It can go up and down, so it's quite convenient. 
and then our temperatures and also if we click on details we get more control and we can see a little better what's going on with the printer here so yeah pretty cool and we can see we're heating up and everything looks good so we're waiting for it to start but yeah that's pretty much how you slice and print straight from the slicer on the computer and this is my preferred way here to do it this way you have a dedicated slicer and you have all the controls so is that starting let's go ahead and double click here and I'll clear the model and we'll drag a bench in here and slice it the same way so I can hear the printer starting in the background as I'm making a new project here and we can see the bench is going to take one hour which is pretty quick considering I am printing only at 50 millimeters a second. So yeah, it's already optimized to be very fast. So yeah, I'm gonna print out some cubes and maybe some benches and we'll look at how the speed test goes. All right, so we printed out a few things here, five to be exact of the cubes and five benches. And we got pretty interesting results. So I did use the Creality Slicer and what we did was 50, 100, 150, 200 and 300 and the interesting part is the faster we got the less it made any sense so we'll take a look at the cubes first so for the 50 millimeter it took 22 minutes the 100 is 14 minutes the 150 is 13 minutes and you guys can see there is not much difference there and then 200 was 12 minutes so we only saved a minute and then 300 was practically no savings at all so let's check out what they look like from 50 to 300 here you guys can see them all at once and you can see that the 50 is much better than the 100 and then we got 150 200 and 300 actually looks even worse and they're practically the same time so i would say looking at them just here on the x axis that anywhere from 50 to 80 or so would probably be the sweet spot for best quality and ringing as you can see we practically don't have much here on the 50 but as far as speed, I'd probably choose this one, which is 150. I wanted to print quite a bit faster as for some reason it has less ringing or ghosting than the 100. But surprisingly, we still have quite a bit of ghosting and the faster we go, the worse it gets. So let's look at a 200 and the 50 here side by side. So you guys can see the 50 looks quite a bit cleaner there. So that's the X and then we got the Y. So it's interesting on the 50, the Y is quite distorted with vibrations and the high speed one is more wavy here we have the x wall which they actually look pretty good and the y wall so yeah the bottoms are practically the same and the tops look decent on both but the 50 is a bit cleaner for sure so yeah i'm not too sure what's going on especially here on the y as we do have quite a bit of vibrations and i double checked everything and made sure it was calibrated and the firmware is all up to date so yeah a little disappointing on the ringing and vibrations but it's not terrible as you guys can see for how quick we're printing i'm gonna move these out of the way for now and here we have the benchy so they're the same speed 50 100 150 200 and 300 so for the 50 it took one hour and seven minutes for the 100 it took 47 minutes and then 150 45 minutes 200 is 43 minutes and 341 minutes so again we're kind of losing the purpose of going quicker after we hit about 150 yeah i would consider this printer or at least the way i sliced it through the reality print that 150 would be the fastest i would go to keep quality and save time now this is all going to depend on what you're printing and the materials and things like that so we're just doing a, a more basic overall look here at the different speeds so i won't be able to hold all these but you can probably kind of tell from the reflection that we do have quite interesting things going on so what's interesting is 100 seems to have the most ghosting around the bench here you can kind of see all those lines there so here we have the 50 and they're also there but they're just fine so yeah I'm not sure exactly what's going on and over here actually it's pretty severe on the 50 a lot of ghosting there and ringing but not too bad on the white here on the back so yeah the benchy does look good here on 50 which took an hour and seven minutes but here we have 47 minutes which just it's more wavy but less pronounced but yeah kind of interesting but i guess anything under an hour for a benchy is pretty quick 
Now, these benchies are not optimized for showing off how fast the printer can print, as they are just sliced normal with actually three outer layers, so that takes much longer than, you know, if you optimize it just for speed. We can probably get this down to 30 minutes, 25 minutes, and get it printed out real quick, but it won't weigh anything because this is a pretty chunky benchy here. This is kind of like a normal model that you would print, that you'd slice yourself. That's why we're doing this kind of test and not just optimizing to get the fastest bench. But yeah, the next two here are 150 not too bad again you can kind of see there's a little bit more waves and we have something funny starting to happen here but again you know it's very presentable and the most important thing is very solid it's not weak or anything like that and then we get the 200 here and we can kind of see a lot more stuff going on in the print itself there's more artifacts and whatnot else and this part here is starting to get melty but yeah again still not too bad so if you're going to print something more boxy even going at 200 here is not an issue. And then 300, in my opinion, it starts to kind of really break down. And you guys can see the warping there. Still not bad. And we have more melty there. But just not usable at this speed, at least, for this kind of printing. Now, again, all of this can be optimized for even faster printing in the slicer. But you just have to dial it all in. But for what we did here and how much time we saved, I honestly would probably stick to printing around 60 to 70 millimeters a second and be very happy with how long it takes to what quality we get out of it.